Firmware version 3 for the Nikon Z9 is available now. We're going to go and show you some of the new features in this video. I also go through a list of some of the small changes that I really like that can help you use your camera a little bit easier. First of all though, I need to download the firmware and I also need to update this camera. So, easiest way to do that is we're going to go down to our setup menu and then right at the bottom will be an option that will say firmware version and then we're going to update this camera from firmware version 2 to firmware version 3. Press OK. That will then sit there and update for a short while. This should take somewhere around about six to seven minutes to complete. One thing to be aware of is when you're updating your firmware, it might take longer than you're used to, especially if you come from an earlier firmware version. So just be patient, give it enough time, the update will complete successfully. So at this location, I want to talk to you about two of the main features that have been added in this new firmware update. The first one being high-res zoom, and the second one being the new 60 frames per second mode. So let's talk about high-res zoom first of all. So when it comes to high-res zoom, you'll notice first of all there's a new option in the menu, so you'll have to go and turn high-res zoom on first. And you'll find this at the very bottom of the video recording menu. So once you've turned high-res zoom on, you'll notice that there's a new high-res zoom logo that's in the corner of your display. You can assign high-res zoom to a number of different buttons or controls on the lens. I've assigned my high-res zoom to function one and function two. So function one lets me zoom in. And you can see that then slowly zooms the frame in up to two times. And then function two lets me slowly zoom that frame out. So when it comes to the speed of high-res zoom, there's three options you can choose from. You have slower, standard, and faster. These really allow you to customize the speed at which the camera will zoom in and out when you're recording. The other way to change the speed of high-res zoom is through your eye menu. So as long as you've got high-res zoom applied to your eye menu, you can then quickly change between slower, standard, or faster speeds in the eye menu without having to go into the main menu. If you want to set high-res zoom on a different control, you would have to go into your custom control settings menu, look for custom controls, and then you can choose if you want it to be on a particular button, like I've got it on function one and function two here. Or if you wanted to assign this to a control ring or a function ring on a lens, you can assign that in the same menu. So when it comes to using high-res zoom, just be aware of what the Z9 is actually doing. It's recording a 4K video, at least you're asking it to record a 4K video, but it's going to record that in 8K and use that extra resolution to apply the high-res zoom. We're using high-res zoom here for landscapes, but there's loads of other situations that you'll find high-res zoom useful. Interviews, portraiture, events, also things like wildlife. If you've got a subject that's just in the distance, you just want to get extra bit closer to. You can now shoot 60 frames a second when it comes to stills. Previously, we were able to shoot in 20 frames a second, 30 and 120. We now have 60, which sits right between those. But there's a couple of things to keep in mind. The 60 frames per second option is in DX crop mode, whereas the 30 and the 120 are in full frame crop mode. The 60 is just giving you that extra flexibility for choosing the right speed that's right for you and your subject. Now that we've taken a look at high-res zoom and the new 60 frames per second option, I just want to show you some of the other features and changes in firmware version 3, and we're going to run through really quickly some of my favorites. The new vertical information display when you're in playback allows you to be able to shoot vertically and change more settings and see what your shots look like on the back of the camera when using your camera in a vertical orientation rather than the traditional landscape orientation. Focus shift shooting now allows you to reset the focus position once it's completed the bracketed set. What used to happen is it would just keep the focus at either infinity or where it took its last frame, but now it can reset to its original starting position, ready for you to start again. There are now two options when it comes to formatting your memory cards. There's quick format and full format. Quick format doesn't delete all the data, but does rearrange the data management. When it comes to a full format, this is what I'd recommend doing if you want to start that card from afresh, or if you're handing that card to somebody else. Firmware 3 has also brought lots of autofocus changes. The first one is that the Z9 can now focus in lower light situations. And this is the same if you're using starlight view on or off. Along with low light autofocus, 
AF accuracy as a whole has been improved when you're dealing with fine details or diagonal patterns or low contrast scenes. There also might be situations where you're trying to autofocus on a subject and the autofocus can stick to a background. Situations where that would occur have been reduced with Firmware 3. In previous firmware, when you're using 3D tracking, if you had something that's passing in the foreground in front of your subject, it could mean that 3D tracking sticks to that new subject. With firmware version 3, that's been reduced, so it's now much more accurate tracking a subject if you have interrupted things moving around in your foreground. The autofocus has been improved when it comes to erratically moving subjects. The camera can now track those subjects as they're moving erratically in the frame, much easier than it has done before. Based on feedback about the color of the 3D tracking box, you can now change the color of the 3D tracking from white to red, depending on your preference. That should hopefully make it much easier to see in certain situations, especially if you're dealing with white snow or white backgrounds. Firmware 3 has also brought some changes to how the camera deals with flash. Previously, what used to happen is that if you were using a flash and with mixing it with ambient light, you could adjust your ambient light, and as that got darker, you could make those adjustments or see those adjustments on the back of the camera. But as soon as you turned your flash on or added flash into the scene, those adjustments would then be reset because the camera's not showing you a live preview of that exposure. However, you now have a new mode in shooting and display, which allows you to change your view mode to also show you a live ambient exposure with flash. So you can set this setting to always, go back to flash, you'll see that even if the flash is off and then back on again, your live ambient exposure remains the same. High frequency flicker reduction was a feature that was added in previous firmware for stills photography, but now we have that same feature in video. You'll find this in the video recording menu and you can turn high frequency flicker reduction on. That will allow you to fine tune your shutter speed and choose the shutter speed that's right for you and your video. And if there's any situation where you're shooting with LED panels or flickering lights that's causing you any flickering issues. That's a look at some of the main changes and some of my favorite changes that you'll find in firmware version three for the Nikon Z9. Always keep your eye out for new firmware updates because they do release all the time for a range of different Nikon cameras.